Hello and welcome to It's Only Electric. Behind me I have two Model Y Performances. This is a Model Y Performance from 2022 with ultrasonic sensors. And on the left side, the Quicksilver Edition Model Y Performance, brand new without ultrasonic sensors and with the latest software or firmware for Tesla Vision. So fake USS sensors this time. And this video is about comparing the capabilities when parking between these two cars. So focus on the newest update for the Tesla Vision and let's see how that works out. We're going to test it on different types of obstacles inside the garage and also here outside to see how it behaves. Can it remember positions and obstacles when you leave the car and come back, etc. So let's start test the Quicksilver Edition. Beautiful color. The best looking color if you ask me. Better looking than the white one. I don't know what you think, but let me know in the comments below. Let's start with the Tesla Vision and see how this one handles the obstacles inside my garage. It is time to do the first test with Tesla Vision, the Quicksilver Performance. This is the first test going in straight forward into the garage without any specific or special obstacles in front of the car. Uh, yeah, you see there is a lot of measurements here. Whoa, it says 40 centimeters. I don't think that's to the front and it says that something is tells me to stop now so if i st if i stop here there's obviously like a ton of room left in front of the car um, so i can't stop here but let's just check how far it is to the obstacle in the front of the car so it tells me to stop here and <laughs> as you see this is the front bumper seven to six centimeters left of space in front of the car so this is obviously not enough because i can't even close the garage door behind me so i need to push it in a bit more and see how far i can go without hitting anything let's drive in a little bit more Tell, still tells me to stop i mean no this is good now it actually shows the distance in the front of the car, so it just got a little bit better. That's good. Let's see if it tells me to stop. Okay, I can't drive in any further. It, it actually shows me 86 centimeters left. I mean, that's, not, uh, that's obviously not the case. I need to double check in front of the car before driving in further. Okay, lucky I didn't go anymore. I mean, there is like at the most 10 centimeters of space left. I can measure that for you. It's too close to measure. So if I would have listened to the Tesla Vision in this case, I would obviously hit the obstacle in front of the car. So let's do the first test just going straight forward into the garage i have a narrow garage so let's see how this works out i'm gonna stop when the car tells me to stop and see how much of a distance we have left yeah seems to tell me to stop around 30 centimeters let's measure and see here's the sensor i'm putting it exactly to the sensor 31.9 centimeters that's pretty damn exact as the car tells us let's try the same thing but with an obstacle in front of the car i'm gonna put an obstacle here and see how the car behaves so now it's time to try a frontal entrance of the garage with an obstacle in front of the car to make it a bit more complicated and see i mean it shows red all over the place uh, 
looks okay. This distance is not showing the distance to the front. It's showing something else, probably the sides uh, or somewhere at the back, I'm not sure. Now it says stop, but I think I have a lot of space left. Let's push it a little bit more. Oh, I don't dare to drive more forward. It tells me to stop and I have done that for a while now. So let's stop, go out to measure. Okay, as you see, it tells me to stop. Distance to this one is 47 centimeters. Distance to the real obstacle is 26 centimeters but it actually told me to stop a while ago so uh, I'm guessing a bit before stopping the car that's not good can it see the obstacle in front of the bench or not will I hit the obstacle stop okay let's measure the distance and see how long it is now it's obviously more far from the bench here so the distance to the bench is now 50 centimeters let's measure the distance to the object here 30.6 centimeters so it is a very consistent it's time to test the same thing without the obstacle and backing into the garage and see how it handled that one then you have the camera the backup camera so it will be better of course it's time to back up into the garage without any extra obstacles, just a straightforward backing to, the, to your own garage should be fine to do. I mean, this time we're actually saved by the backup camera. This will be very hard to do without the backup camera, I should say. Let's see about the distance. It says 45 centimeters. But you obviously see that it's a lot more than that. The car is not fully into the garage yet. Let's continue and see. It hasn't told me to stop yet. No stop signal. Fort stop. So now it told me to stop. This actually looks really good, um, and the view is obviously also very clear. This seems to be around 30 centimeters. Let's stop jump out and measure let's measure that distance and see from the rear bumper yeah this is really good almost 35 centimeters that's pretty exact so the backup camera as a sensor works fine in this case and when the camera is clean of course so let's try the same thing with some dirt on the rear view camera and let's see if that affects the vision or not you see there is a bit of a dirt on the lower part of the camera but it seems to pick up good anyway despite the dirt it says 87 centimeters seems pretty accurate to me now it actually says that the parking assist is limited and that's due to the dirt on the rear camera so it feels that something is wrong with the camera with the rear vision so it tells me to be cautious and now it says 37 centimeters 40 doesn't tell me to stop doesn't beep okay uh, I'm not going any further it says for now it says stop it said like 30 centimeters let's jump out and measure that okay let's measure and see the distance twenty two point six centimeters It 
it did tell me to stop uh, and I didn't want to go further. So with a bit of a dirt on the rear view camera, the Tesla vision is obviously a bit more uh, unprecise. Uh, so that's natural and what you should expect. Let's try to back up into the garage and see how the sensors behave. I mean, the backward view at, with the camera is excellent. So the sensors is obviously not as important in this case, but it's still fun to try and to be able to compare the two different setups. You see the distance here. Still a bit to go. I will stop when it tells me to. Okay. Should be around 30 centimeters in this case too. Let's see. 38.7 centimeters is what we have. Now it's time for another test. I'm going to drive up close to the box with the white Model Y performance with the USS sensors and see how it behaves. After that, I'm gonna step out of the car, lock it, unlock it, enter it again and see if it still sees the box. I think it's pretty obvious it will do, but I'm not sure that uh, Tesla Vision will. So let's try that. Showed something on in front of the car. It doesn't show something now, that's strange. Okay, it sees the obstacle, 58 centimeters, 30, stop. 30 centimeters seems uh, pretty accurate. So if I lock the car now and enter it again, it will still see the obstacle. Let's lock the car. Now it's locked. Unlock it and try it again. Does it still see the obstacle? Putting it in drive. I'm gonna move forward. <laughs> it doesn't see the obstacle. That's strange. I can hit it without seeing it. So the ultrasonic sensor actually didn't recognize the box in front of the car when stationary. Stop, okay, so I put it in park, I put it in drive again and see. Yeah, it still recognizes the object. So now I'm inside the Tesla Model Y Quicksilver Edition without the USS sensors, only trusting Tesla Vision. And you just see I'm running the latest version, 23.6.11, up today. So let's see, the box is in front of the car. Let's drive. No vision of the box. Seems like something is happening, but no illustration of the box in front of the car. No warning at all. I'm getting very close now. I'm probably gonna hit the box. Yeah, so I hit the box, I'm touching the box. I even moved the box forward. No warning, no, no signal at all. Let's try it one more time and see what happens. No, nothing. Let's back up even more and see what happens. So now I'm like five, six meters away from the box. Let's drive and see what happens. No signal at all, nothing, no illustration. I'm gonna hit the box. Yeah, as you see, nothing. Nothing happens. I'm touching the box without any signal, without any warning. I'm gonna do the same thing now, but put a box on top of this box and see how it behaves. Okay, so now I have put another box on top of the first one. So it's a bit higher and the camera should easily be able to, to see this as it is in sight of the camera at the top. Should be fine. So let's try that and see what happens. 
So will it see the obstacle in front of the car? Now it's two boxes on top of each other. That's strange. Why doesn't it see the boxes? No, it sees some obstacle in front of the car. Yep, it sees the obstacle, the camera sees it. Now it disappears. So this is obviously where the camera stops seeing obstacles in front of the car. It's a bit earlier than I thought, a bit more far from the obstacle. Now it sees, sees the obstacle. Let's move closer. Here is where it disappears and the car thinks that it's totally free in front and I can easily crash into the box. without anything happening at all. If you have a look here at the angle of the camera that is placed, that's the lower part of the camera, but obviously doesn't see all the way down to the hood. So there is a gap here. Uh, so that makes the camera vision extremely limited, I would say. So this is the angle, so a lot of space disappears with this angle. It is angled a lot more upwards than I thought. So now let's try it towards a traditional pavement. So let's move it towards a traditional pavement and see if the obstacle or the pavement yeah, turns up here. So you will see it in front of the car. Still pretty obvious, it sees the line. I don't want to crash into this because this will really scratch the car. So it says 50 centimeters. Now I don't think the camera sees it, so now it seems to be the Tesla Vision calculating the distance. So now it said stop. Let's measure. So it's obviously more than 30 centimeters. It seems more like 50. Uh, don't need to measure that one, but I think it still behaved good in this case. It saw the pavement. Uh, now I'm gonna lock the car, enter it again, and see if it remembers the position of the pavement. Let's test that. Put it in drive. Yes, it actually still sees the pavement. I'm not sure if this is caused by the memory. I think this is the B-pillar cameras that sees this obstacle and actually thinks and calculates that there is something in front of the car. So if objects are longer or wider than the front of the car, it will actually calculate and uh, draw a line that continues in front of the car. I'm done. We have tested USS sensors and Tesla vision for a whole day now. Uh, it is obviously not good enough yet. It will probably not be good enough with this setup of the cameras. You obviously need something more in the front of the car. If it's a radar or extra cameras, it's up to Tesla to solve, but it's not on par with the USS sensors. Uh, that's very obvious. One thing that we discovered is that the frontal view doesn't go all the way down on top of the bonnet. It ends a lot higher than I thought from the beginning. Another thing that we discovered is that it uses the B-pillar cameras to make the vision better. So long objects that goes through the whole frontal line of the car is discovered by the side view cameras. So that's a good thing with the Tesla vision uh, that the USS sensors can't give you. So if there is long objects in front of the car, very close to the car, not even the USS sensors will see them, but the B-pillar cameras, if they go out long enough, will discover those objects. That's a good thing. Otherwise, my recommendation is to always back up into narrow areas because the backup camera is still great. You don't need to trust the Tesla Vision for that, just your own eyes. And don't forget to always bring a spray bottle of water and light detergent to keep your cameras clean, 
because they get dirty and the vision is of course affected by dirty cameras. So it's an easy thing to take with you and an easy warranty for not ending up in something that scratches your car. So that's it for now. Give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Thank you for watching, speak to you soon.